It's actually rolling. It's what? It's actually rolling. I hope so. It's <laughs> the trolley. It's supposed to. It's supposed to roll. Yeah. The trolley. It's on Forward and backward, not side to side, right? But we're still at the train show. We are. The, the NMRA National Convention. This week, we're not just at the train show. We are at the train show part of the train show. Right. The National Train Show held as a, in conjunction with the National NMRA this guy. Convention at the Southtown Expo Center. Mm. And it should be really exciting because all the big dealers are there and the national companies and the wow. big manufacturers. and Hang on to your wallet. Holy <laughs> cow, yeah, we may end up buying something expensive. <laughs> so, check this out, it should be amazing. Well, we're still at the NMRA National Convention in Salt Lake City. It was a lot of fun. It was. This is the auction room here. That was pretty neat. They had it in a really fancy hotel. Boy, I'll say. <laughs> it was sweet. But uh, I think my favorite thing were the prototype tours. This is the dispatch center for the Trax trains. Oh my. That was really neat. Here are the Trax trains in the old Union Pacific locomotive shops in Salt Lake. But this week we're looking at the train show. Oh boy, look at all those vendors. The, and train displays. Geez, everything, huh. and it's huge. They call it the National Train Show. It's actually part of the National NMRA convention every year. But it's kind of separate and kind of part of the same thing. They have stuff for everybody, including the little kids. Right. <laughs> That's always fun. After all, they are the future of the hobby. And it seems that they all love Thomas the Tank Engine. They do. As, Except as for one know, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to ride it. She just wanted to sit over there and watch. We all know I have sort of a love-hate relationship with Thomas. I, he's cool and everything, but I don't know. I get sort of discouraged when you go to a really, really, really neat museum and it's Thomas Day. and. Uh, oh well, at least he keeps people interested and he's fun. And it wouldn't be a train show if there weren't a bunch of modular railroads. This was really fun. This one's kind of a early HO railroad. It's really neat that the uh, early style locomotives uh, with the modern technology these little small engines like this can now actually run and run really well because I just love early engines like that. I love these animated signs like the one here on the Union Station. They're getting better looking, I think. These modular railroads are sort of fun for a lot of people. A lot of people don't have room for a full layout somewhere in their house so they can build these modular railroads and then take them around to events like this and have a lot of fun running them and showing them off and so on. I guess all that scenery and stuff has to be quite lightweight. Yeah, if you're going to haul it around in a trailer or a truck, you can't very well make it out of plaster like you normally would. This looks like it might be made out of styrofoam or something. Oh, look, an aero liner. Oh, boy. <laughs> or an aero train, rather, not aero liner. Aero train. I love the aero train. It's just such a weird train. It's back when they thought trains should look like cars. <laughs> Looks like a Studebaker. I like this because it's the three rail. Yeah, I like the old Lionel train sets. Of course, people still do Lionel. I'll say. It's still very popular. I like it. And this is one of my favorite locomotives of all time, a Union Pacific three-unit turbine. Oh, look at that. This is uh, over on the Fremo modules. We're actually going to come back next week and look at both this engine and the Fremo modules in much, much more depth. But uh, probably the biggest of the modular railroads here at the convention were these Fremo modules. They're neat. They're neat. Fremo is just kind of an unusual concept that allows for a lot of diversity. Of course, the heart of the train show are the big dealers. In this uh, case, the, the national manufacturers. I'll say. This is Soundtracks with their Tsunami sound systems. That's one of our favorite companies. It sure is. Well, they're in Durango, so we can go visit the train and Soundtracks. But also one of our favorite sound modules. <laughs> Thank you. 
And over here we have Digitrax. The sound modules like Tsunami go in the trains. Digitrax provides power to the tracks that runs the sound modules. And fortunately it's all compatible because everybody follows the same standard. But I love Digitrax as a way to run the trains. It is fun to see all these different major manufacturers here pedaling their cool trains. But uh, this company's selling structure kits. This is my favorite part, really. You know, when you get right down to it, I think that's my favorite thing to do is build the structures. Absolutely. I think it's Steve's favorite thing to I do. I think so. We just all get a kick out of it. Well, it's whimsical and it's fun. Let your imagination run wild. Absolutely. Oh, and the tiny, tiny, tiny There trains. we go. I know you have a fascination <laughs> with the teeny, 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 tiny. That's mine right there. This is Z-Scale right here. And just about the time you think it can't get smaller than Z-Scale, then here's T. That's the one I want. One 450th scale. Just microscopic. But uh, people have fun with this. Like I say, it's sort of whimsical. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's also a lot of really serious modeling going on in these really teeny, teeny scales. But there's also a lot of really serious modeling being done in these tiny scales. This is a big boy. A big boy? A bi it's six oh. inches long. <laughs> wow. And it runs perfectly. It's also $2,000. Oh. So like I say, serious, serious modeling being done in these teeny, teeny, tiny scales. That's really neat. I'd like think. that one. Start saving my pennies, I guess. And this was really neat to see. This is the coach yard. And these guys make these uh, post-war stainless steel passenger cars. They're actually made out of brass and then they're nickel plated so that they look like stainless steel cars. Aren't they beautiful? They're just beautiful. Gorgeous and all 100% handmade. Their process is really, really interesting and they were showing us how, how they do that. They start off with brass sheets and then a photo resist is put on both sides of the brass sheet that will reveal the details. The, the sheet is then placed in an acid and from one side the surface details are etched in and from the other side the cut lines that go all the way through for doors and windows and that sort of thing. Are, are burned in there using the acid. The sheets are then hand formed over a wooden form to give the car its shape. At that point, the ends of the cars are soldered in place, as are many of the surface details, railings and antennas and that sort of thing. And then the entire car is nickel plated to give it that, that uh, stainless steel look. Isn't that beautiful? It's sure beautiful. Well, wow. and then other details are added. Now this one's painted silver because some of the railroads painted their cars to look like stainless steel instead of actually making them out of stainless steel. These are California Zephyr cars, which were actual stainless steel bud cars. And one of my favorite trains, and this is one of my favorite cars of all time, Silver Sky. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh man, I love that car. And that's such a beautiful model of it. And sometimes the cars are painted because man does not live by stainless steel alone. <laughs> <laughs> It was such a big show that we wandered around for the entire day, just going from big manufacturer to big manufacturer. This is Caddo. I know one of your favorite companies because they do in scale. Exactly. And they do it really well. They're probably best known for their N scale trains, but a lot of people don't realize that they also make HO scale trains. And they had a few of those on display here as well. A 
lot of these manufacturers have been around since, well, since Shag was a pop. I think so. <laughs> Ka uh, Katie here uh, pretty, pretty much revolutionized the idea of couplers uh, coming up with uh, the industry standard now, really, as well as wheel trucks, all different kinds of wheel trucks. But that's what they're best known for, wheel trucks and especially couplers. They really look like nice wheel trucks, very detailed. Really detailed, really nice, and in all different scales. And this is Atlas, one of the old standby companies, again from the 50s and 60s. Lots of HO models, but they also do O scale. Uh, a lot of people don't know them for their O scale, but they really make some high quality O scale stuff as well and Athern. Oh, there you go. Wow, one of one of the big companies. They've gotten back into making steam locomotives. Uh, originally they made steam locomotives, but they couldn't get the performance out of them that they got out of their diesels. And uh, so they just uh, stuck to making diesels, making the finest diesels and best running diesels. But they always said if they could make a steam engine that ran as well as their diesels, then the, that would be something they would get back into, and now they have. One of my favorites is Woodland Scenics, and I noticed they had a booth. Yeah, uh, these are the guys who made the trailer models uh, for the trailer park that you're building. That is right. And they've got that uh, just plug electrical system for lighting the whole thing. Really simple to use, but they're better known for this sort of thing. Uh, scenery items, how to do scenicking, and they've got this product, it's sort of a foil that you can put plaster on to make mountains out of. And they have a whole line of water simulation products just for doing lakes and streams and waterfalls wow. and that sort of thing. That's nice. Isn't that beautiful? Wonderful. It looks so real. It does. Woodland Scenics. And this is their just plug electrical system for lighting structures. That's what you're using on your trailer park. Exactly. And it's so easy to work with. And it looks great. Right. And this is Walther's, one of the old, old, old school companies. They started off as a distribution company exclusively connecting the smaller manufacturers to the hobby shops. Without Walther's, I don't know how many of these really small backyard operations would have really succeeded. But now they're probably better known for manufacturing their own stuff. Look at this steel mill that they're bringing back this year. Wow, look at that. It's gigantic. It's a whole series of buildings, including this, the blast furnace. But they're making several different buildings. I don't know my way around a steel mill, so I'm not sure what all these different buildings represent. But if you had about, oh, I don't know, 50 square feet of, of HO Railroad that you wanted to devote just to a steel mill, uh, you could certainly fill in that amount of space just with these very, very large steel mill buildings. And it's no good having a steel mill if you don't have all the ancillary stuff to go with it. So they've got all the different freight cars and uh, different types of railroad equipment that you would need to go along with your steel mill, including slag cars and uh, uh, molten metal pot cars and that sort of thing. Again, I don't know my way around a steel mill, so I'm not 100% sure what any of this is. A lot of this stuff is a re-release. It's been off the market for a while, but a few of these items are brand new for 2020. And over here uh, in their motive power, a lot of this stuff is brand new. Oh, look over here is Bachman. We've been doing Bachman trains for the last few weeks on the Tuesday show. Right. And uh, Bachman is, uh, well, they're a really great company. They've been around for a long, long time. They make stuff in a lot of different scales. Uh, this locomotive here we covered at Christmas. It's the Grizzly Flats Emma Nevada locomotive. 
That was Ward Kimball's personal train out in his backyard. One of my favorites. <laughs> One of my favorites. And and we did a show on that. And it's just, what a great model they've put together here. But they've done this mogul also as Eureka and Palisade number six. Oh, look at that. That's sort of a companion to Eureka and, and Palisade's number four, Dan Markoff's engine. But this one was modeled with the cylinder pumps, the uh, crosshead cylinder pumps that provided water injection back in the 1870s and 80s. That's a neat feature that you don't see modeled very often. So that's really intriguing. I was uh, really dying to lay hands on one of these. Oh, it's, yeah. And look, they're doing the uh, Eureka and Palisade passenger cars. Oh, my gosh. As is Dan. <laughs> yes, it looks just like his. It looks just like his. This is the coach, but they're actually doing the combine that he's building oh, out in the shop. Nice. And it's it's exactly the car that he's doing. And I think we need to get a hold of one of these and dress it up to look exactly like his. You know, his is going to be done on Thursday. That's what he keeps saying. That's what he keeps saying. He's been <laughs> saying that for years and years and years. Yes. But there's a lot of Thursdays out there but you can tell that this is dan's car because look it's it's named after his uh mother yes elsa he's building his car at the railroad museum in uh, boulder nevada right it's really neat to see these bachman trains running around like this such diversity it sure is they've got all the different scales they they do williams three rail uh, this train right here is an ON30. That's kind of their personal scale gauge combination that they invented a few years ago. But Bachman, uh, really a great, great company and just really fun to have them part of model railroading. Well, I don't know about you, but I've just about walked myself to death around oh, this. No kidding. What a huge, huge show. This is the... Uh, the uh, railroad museum, the model railroad museum in Greeley, Colorado. And we have been trying and trying to get in to see that. Right. And one of these days we're going to make it. We've actually been by their building twice. Right. <laughs> Just passing through, but we've never had a chance to actually see their layout. And they say it's one of America's best layouts. We really want to see that. Well, the whole thing's folding up and as usual, we're the last ones out. That's right. That's us. Well, that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. I'm beat, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, that, that is a big expo hall. It's hard to get from one end of it to the other. That's the biggest of the train show. I mean, we've been to a lot of train shows, but that right, really that's was really huge. covering some space. Space. It was just right. amazing. Just right. amazing. But how cool it was to see all the big manufacturers. Some really neat new stuff coming from Walther's and oh, just... Oh, I know. Holy cow. Yes. Holy a cow. A lot to look at. A lot to look at. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, yeah. well, you know the, you know the routine. Mm -hmm. Here's your opportunity to subscribe. The blue button. Yes. Are we ready for it? It is. Zoink. We're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. <laughs> and we will see you here on Tuesday as we play with some toys. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.